Life is a precious gift. One moment you're here, and then the next, you're gone. But where has she gone? Science can only tell us so much. But how do you explain the unexplainable? To many, New Age spirituality is the answer. But what is the question? And can it really be answered? Tonight on Eating Media Lunch, we ask the question that answers that very answer. Even back in the 80s, when this footage was shot, the world was starting to go mad. Traffic, fruit and veg, Auckland grammar, the stock market, building sites. What does it all mean? What's the point? Are there unicorns? Is there a god? Are there ghosts? On an overcast Sunday Arvo, I headed to the new Spirit Festival. For one day only, Auckland's Taj Mahal of Trotting is transformed into a temple of tarot and other new age carry on. Psychic fairs are a veritable smorgasbord of spirits, a depot of the divine and arbuckles of the afterlife. First stop, the spiritual fad that Madonna has made famous, the Kabbalah. God, hey, God, hey. Kabbalah is not, this is what you must do and this is how you do it exactly. It is a method of understanding creation, God's creation, as far as we as finite beings can, our part in it, and it answers all of our questions. Who's ever asked, why am I here? Where am I going? Even as I ponder these from? imponderables, my mind drifts off into the rather fetching plasma You're screen that like hangs on the wall here in the delightful Lady Lounge. Like many people I know, my life is consumed by the pursuit of consumer goods, and I'm beginning to wonder where all the self-obsession is leading us. As I drifted off, I had a premonition. Yeah, sorry I don't come to the funeral. I've sent a digital pofery through on a MPEG-7 through the ISP. In Tokyo? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that porn, actually. I'm bloody beating the baggers as we speak. It's riding down a hill. It's clear that our spiritual headspace is in need of a serious defrag. No wonder so many of us are searching for new answers. But which New Age tonic will best add fizz to our collective soda stream of consciousness? I quite liked the Kabbalah. It seemed to be pretty vague and non-threatening. It was sort of comforting and wasn't too offensive. Can you describe your stall in three words or less? Ancient soul from the like, earliest ocean of the earth. Wisdom for the next thousands of years. A tool for personal transformation. It's um, about awareness. It's the Bioptron Healing Light. When we eat, uh, where the food is coming from. It's a very ancient, goes back right back to Paleolithic times. Well, it's a very good uh, self-improvement practice based on truthfulness, compassion and tolerance. Physical, emotional, mental, um, Dyslexia. You've got 11 or 13 chakras inside your body, which are the energy centers. This is Falun Gong, a Chinese cult that gets a rough ride from the bullies in Beijing. They dig meditation and swastikas. Was Hitler into this? Oh, heck no, <laughs> nothing to do with that. Oh, well, why is there a swastika? Uh, actually, a swastika has been known in the East for thousands and thousands of years. It's a symbol which represents uh, good fortune and um, yeah, also wealth and prosperity. 
you get many Jewish people signing up for this? Um, not, I can't say we have really. I haven't seen many, many Jewish people uh, around really, so I can't say we have. Because the Falans face all kinds of mistreatment by the Chinese government, they prepare themselves with SAS-style shocking self-torture. The pain they can withstand is really quite humbling. The news talks to be 11.29, Eddie, morning. Uh, morning, like that's Eddie here. That's terrific, Eddie. Falango. The Falans seem like calm, happy people. They didn't have FPOS. And they're not afraid to use a swastika when necessary. What is this store? It's the Bioptron Healing Light. It comes from Switzerland and it's used to help the body heal itself. Um, I've got this bruise here. The Bioptron be able to help my bruise? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, we would use a purple light on that. <laughs> and we just move it really slowly over the area like this. So a lot of rugby players have got them, a lot of runners. Um, Eric Rush uh, is Eric Rush has a light and he really, Does he really? enjoys it. Yes. He's getting old as well, Eric Rush, so he'd probably need it quite a bit. So have you seen Paul Holmes' new program on Prime? No, I haven't yet. Mm. No. It didn't seem to affect my bruise, but the Bioptron light has a nice designer shape. The lady was very nice, and Eric Rush has one. last a stall that was truly out of this world. It's basically a cult built around Billy Meyer, a Swiss geezer who's chummy with aliens. So he, he just snapped off these photos, what, he saw the UFO and he snapped them off? Or? No, he was pretty much guided to where it was. He's had contacts oh. ongoing from the age of five. What about you, have you seen a UFO? I saw some over there when I was visiting there. One of them with Billy and I looked up and I saw, and I asked him, oh, is, is that one of the control ships going by? And he said, yep, that's it, that's one of them. Oh, is he, is he, has he been up on one of these things, or have they come down? Yeah, and... several times, but most of the times they come to visit him. They just sort of, a bit like Star Trek, they just beam themselves into his office, or once they even beamed a sack of potatoes into his office when they were short of food at the center there. Unlike American aliens who stick things up people's bums, the Swiss space travellers are more like intergalactic greengrocers. They're really genuine people. Billy Myers. Billy Myers' followers seem like lovely people. Billy has a great beard, and he takes great photos. Basically, pranic healing is all about dealing with the energy body, which is aura. So apart from giving you spiritual evolvement, we also deal with the ailments that your body has. While white people struggle with New Age carry-on, Asians, and Indians in particular, are world champions. It occurs to me that I probably wouldn't accept this kind of carry-on from any old Brian of Blenheim or Sharon of Sunnynook. Does it sometimes not work on people? It does. It does work on all the people, but with varying degree. It may look ridiculous, and on the surface, it's certainly mumbo-jumbo gone mad. But behind the claptrap lies a layer of bullshit that some say borders on the divine. Within minutes, I found myself travelling outside my body into a divine dimension of brilliant colour. So, your pro-choice and pro-civil union, that's very surprising. What do you think of Brian Tamaki? Who? Brian Tamaki? Brian uh, Tamaki? You know, kind of looks like a chubby sort of Elvis, um, kind of Cabbage Patchy. Oh, I love Cabbage Patchy. So cutie will do. Oh, no, I feel. I feel different. But I've, only, I've never spent 10 minutes with my hands, eyes closed before, sitting in a room with all the noise with my hands like that. What were you doing? We clean the major chakras. Uh, we take out the dirty energies and we put new, fresh, divine energies in. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised by pranic healing. Pranic healing. Divine energies are always welcome. It's low impact and I didn't suffer any after effects or heart palpitations.
This may look like New Age carry on gone mad, but Mikhail Nielsen is no Charles Manson. His cult isn't as sinister as the music and editing techniques would indicate. In fact, he's not even peddling mumbo jumbo, just helping people to loosen up and sing. Is this the five and a half grand job? No, this is 2390. 2390. Currently, they are going Is up Is that including price. GST? <laughs> yes, including GST. One thing that all these new age practices have in common, apart from love and chakras, is the price tag. Even angels, it seems, accept Visa and possibly FPOS. Now, where did I put a purse? Somebody wanted some change. I know I brought a purse somewhere. Yeah, they're, they're um, $5. Yeah. It was about then that I had an idea. I spotted an empty corner of the stables and decided to try an experiment. First, a quick change of clothes, then assemble some new age knickknackery, and in less than an hour and 55 minutes, I was in business. The shocking results of our hidden camera sting after the Though they're open to many things, the punters at the new Spirit Festival were slow to pick up on Inshallah Galabala, the ancient art of pubic aura reading. Forty minutes later, and I had my first customer. Oh, please sit down. Within a few moments, I found myself acting out the part of a new age practitioner. Basically, um, Inshallah Galabala uh, is uh, an ancient form of pubic oral reading where we take a photo of your pubis and hold very very still i noticed that other stall holders often use technology to lend credence to their shenanigans what i'm actually sensing here is um a death uh, somebody in the family or a recent death in the ancient times in india they weren't so hung up about this and, uh, maybe the death of an animal Within an hour, I found that the words flowed like a meaningless but strangely comforting manuka honey. Not so much a death, but um, the acknowledging of it, uh, the finishing of something and then the moving on to something else. Really? And the pubic bone, you find, is actually located right through in this area and here. There will be a death at some stage. Eh? possibly in your life, possibly in someone else's life close to you. I was surprised at how easy it was to convince people that I was for real. For me, it raised questions about the morality of bullshitting the gullible and why so many New Zealanders are so eager to believe in the most absurd and wacky quackery. Jeanette Wilson says she can talk to the dead. Could the media be to blame? World, Take this item from 2020, for instance, a primetime away. current affairs show that Speak seemed to be taking seriously a woman who claims to talk cancer. to the dead. But as Melanie Reid reports, Jeanette Wilson's response to that is, seeing is believing. I've got a young man in the spirit world that is... <sighs> With her Lady Di looks and amateur dramatics, Wilson was primetime gold. For balance, 2020 wheeled in leading sceptic Vicky Hyde. Did you feel that this was that this was balance? I think it was a it was a help. I mean, we expect to get about 10 percent if we're lucky of the time that you'll give a paranormal claimant because people want to hear about dead people. They don't want to hear about a, a pragmatic, practical explanation that's not half as exciting. What I was disappointed about was that they'd told me before I flew up that they were going to put me in the test group, which I would have been fascinated to have been in. They didn't. They went off to do the test, uh, and then they showed it on TV as an amazing, astonishing test with absolutely no comment about it. And I had people saying to me, was that really amazing or astonishing? Why didn't you comment about it? You know, were you really flummoxed? And no, we weren't flummoxed, we just didn't have the opportunity. And I think to leave people with the impression that they had something astonishing there that the skeptics couldn't answer, 
was a little unfortunate. Skeptics, be open-minded, be skeptical. It's a little bit sad. But skeptics are open-minded. We will be excited to see somebody actually provide some decent, testable claims. But every time that we're invited to along to some of one of these, it's the same old routines. I could have written her pattern myself. Like Wilson, British medium Rosemary Altier has also had a good run on local media. I have a... With a routine that's strangely familiar. I'm not sure how old this boy is, but I have a boy who was killed in an accident. She's bringing through with her a small boy. Somebody was absolutely terrified, absolutely terrified, and they weren't very old. <laughs> There are three possible explanations. One is it's a genuine phenomenon and something amazing is happening. And that's basically what the skeptics look at. The other two explanations is the person is a fraud and a con artist. The other explanation is the person is sincere and well-meaning but is just using the same kinds of techniques that the frauds and con artists are. It's very hard to find out between those two mm. unless somebody actually owns up mm. and says, yes, I've been conning or, hey, I've just realized what I've been doing. And are there people that do that? No, it's very, very rare. Um, you buy into this thing. I, I actually read a really interesting article recently of somebody who was uh, in the alternative medicine area who's actually sort of changed to the other side and has become a skeptic. And she talked about how difficult it was sociologically. She lost her friends, her health practitioners, her whole culture that she'd built up over 20 years of being in the alternative medicine thing. And then when she finally realised, yes, it was all rubbish, she lost all that. It's kind of like leaving something like the Brethren Church or, or the Amish. Very difficult to do. It's obvious that some people are looking for more than science can offer. Seeking alternative medicines, chakras and auras, in fact anything but the obvious and mundane evidence that often explains reality. It's a never-ending battle to thwart those invisible powers that eat away at our happiness. But surely it's a minority who believe in all this hocus-pocus and jive mumbo-jumbo. Fuck no, says Dr Mark Wilson, a lecturer in psychology and a paranormal specialist at Victoria University. People who don't believe are actually in the minority. So in the case of psychic healing, about 30% of people actually do not believe that it actually works. And the remaining 70% are either unconvinced or they actually do believe that, that there is some validity there. Are you joking? No. Really? I could show you the survey now. What does this table represent? According to a 1991 Massey University study, there are more who believe in clairvoyance, the afterlife and psychic healing than those who don't. It may be some consolation to skeptics that poltergeists and the Loch Ness Monster aren't faring quite so well. So well, paranormal phenomena, just like religious phenomena, serve some kind of psychological function. So I might be really scared of dying, and therefore the belief in reincarnation or astral projection or in spirits that I can't see might be reassuring because it tells me that something exists after my body dies. Meanwhile, my experiment had taken an unexpected turn. There'll be a lot of oranges and blues. As time went on, I found that the bullshit was flowing with ease. I was almost believing it myself and quite enjoying the strange sense of power it gave me. You've got a girlfriend at the moment or a partner or anything? No. No? No. That's probably what that's indicating just in there. See that, that whiteness there? But with one subject, things began to come unstuck. Unwisely, I'd almost convinced her that her dead mother was in fact still alive. What are you doing? This is probably going too far. She became visibly upset. We had no choice but to pull the plug on our experiment. Actually, I'm not really doing this. There's a camera just behind you over there. There's a camera just here. I can't actually. I'm sorry about this. Honestly, I keep going with this. Sorry, I'm going to cut that. It's just got, it's got a bit silly when we're starting to talk about Sorry, sorry. I'm very, very sorry about that. We won't actually use this for the piece. Just a bit of harmless fun? Vicky Hyde doesn't think so. It sounds cynical and it sounds nasty, but the basis of this industry is cynical and nasty. It's taking advantage of people's vulnerabilities. And we need to understand this. We don't need to give these people a free run every time they hit the media circuit. I'm here, Mum. I'm hearing him say, I'm here, Mum.
Still to come, Brian the Bishop meets the media dog. And then boom, sodomite. To the celebrity share market now and a Paul Holmes dog chew sells for $12 on Trade Me. Susie Aitken's boyfriend proposes via dog. Hawksby tells the woman's day of her cleaning obsession. Anderton pulls the plug on the NOS party. Mother of God. And Deb's Weds then joins Prebs as Act turns to CAC. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody say Sodom. If I really get into it, just peel it back and see the Sodomite. Some people need to be educated because we've got this far, not by, by informed uh, information. We've got here by ignorance. I really encourage you to come back tonight and let you have a real peek and then boom, sodomite. The young are going to be affected. It's going to go out one year and out the other. Because there will be money in it because this is what I want to do. Hallelujah. And that's our show. Coming up next week, the TV phenomenon that's sweeping the Arab world as Al-Qaeda fights for the hearts and minds of Islamic youth. Ishalak Mohammed Ishalak, Jawan Sabil Ikaha Afghanistan Muhajadin. Afra Hezbollah. Kalashnikov. Ala Akbar Sepida, Jawan. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch, Probably need a couple more minutes, don't you? In you go. It's a very good recipe I got from Charlotte Glennie. She said Siamese, but a Burmese will do, I'm sure. She'll be fine. At number 77, who could forget channeling on Sunday? She was my daughter in Judaic times. She recognises me as this and as the leader, but I am an energy form. I do not... I do not inhabit a physical body at this point in time. I believe that Princess Diana was probably a very evolved soul and she came to Earth to teach us love and unity and maybe other things. It's an energy of enlightenment and enrichment of your lives in the physical body. And we thank you now for this opportunity to pass this message to you. Thank you.